Have you ever thought, hey, let's combine some carbon fiber and magnets and let's make a wallet? Yeah, me either, so stick around. Welcome to Wallatopia. We appreciate you being here. Please go to wallatopia.info and register. You won't regret it. And remember, Wallatopia is where you go when you want to know anything and everything there is about the world of wallets. There's also a new site. You can go to explore.wallatopia.info. It gives you an interactive method of finding your next wallet. So go there and check it out. Now we've had several requests to look more closely at the Pitaka Carbon Fiber Magnet Wallet. So let's get into it. Here we have the big box for the small wallet. It's a big box for a small wallet. You can see we have this uh, silver inlay for the, the company Pitaka, it's iPitaka. And the wallet itself is the Mag Ease, has a carbon fiber, a faux carbon fiber exterior on this box, kind of nice. And it slides out. So let's see how this wallet comes. And there we go, nice. But it is magnetic in how it connects interesting so we all right and this is gonna work I'm sure if we do this yeah that's on there pretty good that's kind of a neat use of magnets for packaging so we take this off and we see what we have a card Probably, I'm sure instructions on this QR code here and what do we have here this can't be too good if we're already dealing with warns I'm not sure what warns means but I know where, where, where it was made. The magnets used within this product may demagnetize the magnetic strip of your bank card. What? Well, what use is this then? Come on. Take a look at the wallet itself here. It is made of carbon fiber. It has multiple layers and you can buy additional layers for it. Magnets is its thing. Looks like we have a main magnet down here which acts as the pivot point. Catch is pretty good. And then we have these secondary magnets up here which uh, keep it organized when it's open and when it's closed. It's more safety when it's closed to hold it that way. Kind of neat that way. And then it breaks apart, obviously. You take these off, attach them together, just like that. Now into the feature review of the Pitaka Maggies. With the Pitaka Maggies wallet, it has many layers and the modularity of this system is really what is important to them and they tout quite a bit. It's one of the main features of it. So if we look at what we have here, we have a back end, in this case could be front, if you want to call it, and also a front. And both of these can carry a card. Now on the card layers themselves, each layer can carry a card on the front and the back. So in this particular wallet, we have a configuration for six cards and you can add additional layers that they have. They have three different layer types, cards, a money clip, and a box. And you can purchase them all as separate add-ons from just this base wallet that comes as you see here. Now, we did actually buy one of the accessory options. This is the box layer here. So let's take a look at that. The box layer. This is where you can put in coins, you can put extra cards, keys, uh, you know, SIM cards if you want. It's just a kind of a carry-all. And with all the systems here, it just attaches and add it like that. It just adds onto what you already have here and provides that uh, box capability. We're going to look at it from the back here. And that is a review of the features of the Pitaka Maggie's wallet. Now into the card and cash insertion test. Now you saw that I got six cards, uh, six coins, and then eventually three slips of cash that I swapped out there in the particular wallet. Now, minimalist carry, well, really this could be down to one card. Well, let me show you that. Since this is modular, it's a matter of just taking layers off. So we can take this top layer, uh, we can take this next, we can take all these off. If you want, you can just have one here. I don't think it's all that secure. So let's just say that you then add the other side layer 
and now you have a fairly thin wallet and you have two cards. So it really comes down to how many you want to carry and how thick you want your wallet to be. From a quality perspective, it's made in China. It's made from carbon fiber and lots of magnets, lots of magnets. Now there are two models, the Maggie's Wallet, which is this, and the Maggie's Wallet UE. We have the regular wallet. This is the Maggie's Wallet, okay? This is their first one. Now the strength of the magnets work well to hold the wallet together. But uh, I did do a drop test and when I did it all, you know, just all fell apart like you would expect but all the cards stayed in there, so it was okay. Now it does have RFID protection, I, I know, I know, but it's part of the carbon fiber, so it's okay. Now it is very expensive, it's $115, that includes the $80 base and the $35 for the box layer, and so, you know, this really can get expensive over time. Now the modularity of the system is a big selling point in this wallet, as it does allow you to choose which cards you want to carry in any particular day. Two one day, six the next, take, six the next. You know, take your box so you can put coins in there. It really, it, it all snaps together, so it's really up to you. It does have these rounded corners as well, so it helps uh, prevent from poking and causing holes in your pockets. It's it's really uh, a, a nice design if this is something you want. Six cards and some coins for you know over a half an inch in size. Now the difference between the two versions is stunning, and not for good reason. The original Maggie's wallet we have here will demagnetize all the strips on your credit cards. And so they released a different version, the Maggie's EU or UE. Uh, let me show you the comparison. As you can see here, the original wallet versus the wallet UE. The important part here is the top where it says cards compatibility, magnetic strip cards. Well, the regular wallet, no, it's not compatible. So. Why would you even buy this one right here, the, the regular one, when it will demagnetize the strips on your cards? Sometimes you do need those. It's not like they're just a, you know, some irrelevant piece of your credit card. Even with the chip, you still have options and needs to use that strip. So that's just as wrong. So if we look at the UE version of it though, it does accept it. But the weird thing about this is you go down here and really the thing that really, that bothers me the most is that it's not that they decided to make a wallet that didn't demagnetize your cards, which is good and they should have done it, but they introduced it like it's a new product. It's not. You fixed a problem, Pitaka, and then it seems like you're just kind of covering it up to say, oh, now we have a new version of the product. And to make matters worse, they're different sizes. So if you bought this original one and you go, wow, this was really bad, it demagnetized my cards, and you want to get the newer one they have, you cannot swap the layers. They don't work. That's dumb. And I think that's just a bad choice for their customers. As you saw me quickly in the card and cash insertion test, you uh, fan these cards out and you grab them with your thumb and pull them out this way. I've seen some people try and grab them at the end to do that. And that's just not, doesn't work well. You just use your thumb, pull it out this way and it works great. And of course, you know, the modularity is what's kind of cool. You just you know, set them down like this and it's just kind of cool because you can grab it and they, hook up just like that. It's it's kind of cool, but it is, it, is, it is a novelty in my mind more than anything else. Now it measures 3.9 by 2.6 by 0.4, and that's before you add any additional layers, and it weighs 69 grams. Now honestly, this comes across to me that there was an idea to use magnets and carbon fiber, and let's make it a wallet. I, it just didn't seem like it was, I don't know, it seemed like they were trying to put cool into a wallet. And it's very expensive. I mean, this is really more of a marketing value to me. And so let's get into the final score. For quality, a three. Price a two, it would be lower if you really had to add the add-ons there. Features a three and usability a three. It's because they fixed the demagnetization, otherwise it would be a two. And perception is a two. That was just a, a poor marketing effort here on introducing a new product when they really should have just provided it to their customers. And that gives us a final score of 27 out of 50. As you can tell, uh, I wasn't too impressed with the Pitaka. I think the concept is okay, but magnets are very hard to do with wallets. So you make your own decision on that. If you like other videos, just look here or go to wallatopia.info slash rankings and see the rankings for all of these. And again, look at explore.wallatopia.info. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, bye.